Hello, I'm Likit Alakandi, consultant neurosurgeon here at Rossall Hospital in Glasgow. Today, I'll be answering some of your most asked questions about a discectomy and whether it might be the right treatment for your back problems. So, let's begin. What is a discectomy? A discectomy is an operation to remove part of a damaged disc in your spine, relieving difficult symptoms such as pain, weakness or numbness caused by a bulging or slip disc in your back. Not all slip discs will need to be operated on and many won't cause symptoms at all. But if you have persistent symptoms caused by a slip disc that are affecting your quality of life, you may be recommended this surgery. So what's a slip or herniated disc? Your spinal discs are soft areas of tissue that act as cushions between your back bones known as your vertebrae, which are the bones of your spine. A herniated disc, also sometimes referred to as a slip disc, means one of them has moved from its correct position. How can a slip disc happen? A slip disc can occur for many reasons. The most common is age-related degeneration. As you get older, the discs in your spine can lose their flexibility and elasticity, leading to degeneration. This makes them more susceptible to tearing or rupture, even from a minor strain. Performing repetitive movements that cause stress on your spine, such as bending, lifting or twisting can contribute to deterioration of the discs over time. Lifting heavy objects improperly and using your back muscles in, instead of your legs can cause undue pressure on your spine, leading to a slip disc. Accidents or falls can exert a sudden unexpected force on your spine, potentially causing a disc to herniate. Chronic poor posture can put uneven pressure on your spine, leading to disc damage over time. More so, excessive body weight puts extra stress on the discs in your lower back, increasing the risk of a slip disc. Unfortunately, some people have a predisposition to developing slip discs, indicating that genetics can play a role in this condition. As I said, there are many reasons you can have a slip disc in your spine. What are the most common symptoms of a slip disc? Along with back pain, when a slip disc presses on a nearby spinal nerve, they can cause symptoms such as severe arm or leg pain along with numbness or tingling. You may also experience reduced muscle strength in those areas. However, a lot of times a slipped disc can go unnoticed, causing minimal symptoms which you may have ignored. Do you always need surgery to treat the problem? Most people with a slipped disc will not need surgery to fix it. Often, a herniated disc will heal naturally, aided by rest and perhaps anti-inflammatory medications, sometimes steroid injections, muscle relaxants, or prescribed painkillers. Some people might need a course of physiotherapy. In some cases, symptoms persist despite the use of these treatment options over a long period of time. If you are living with long-term pain or any other chronic symptoms of a slip disc, a discectomy could correct the problem and help you get back to living a happy, active life. Can a slip disc heal itself? Yes, in most cases, a herniated disc heals on its own or can be treated at home with things like over-the-counter pain medications, anti-inflammatory medications, rest, or perhaps gentle exercises recommended by a physiotherapist. How can I prepare for a discectomy? There's no specific preparation needed before you have surgery on your spine, but your consultant and their team will want you to be as healthy as possible so that you can recover as quickly as possible. We might ask you to do a few things to improve or maintain your general health before surgery. This includes advice on healthy eating and exercise, as well as stopping smoking on the run-up to surgery if necessary. You may be asked to stop taking certain medications, which can cause risks during surgery. You might already have regular physiotherapy to help with chronic back pain. If so, your physiotherapist will be aware you're going to have surgery and tailor your exercises to strengthen your spine as much as possible. This will allow for a smooth recovery following the procedure. Will you have general anesthetic during surgery? Yes, you will have general anesthetic, meaning you won't be awake during surgery. What happens during surgery? Your surgeon will begin your discectomy by making a small incision over the area of the spine where the herniated disc is located. You can have a herniated disc anywhere along the whole spinal column, but they are most common in your lumbar spine, which is the lower back, 
and your cervical spine, which supports your head and the neck. You will typically either have a cervical discectomy or a lumbar discectomy. You might also hear the term lumbar microdiscectomy, which is where the operation is performed using a minimally invasive technique. In the lumbar spine, once your surgeon has gained access to the disc, they will remove the part of the disc that has been pressing on the nerve. This leaves the rest of the disc behind so that it can continue to support your back. They may sometimes decide to stabilize the vertebrae in a procedure referred to as spinal fusion. In the cervical spine, the surgery involves removing the whole of the disc and replacing it with the prosthesis to fuse the vertebrae or sometimes the prosthetic disc that maintains motion at that segment of the spine. Your surgeon will now close your wound, usually with dissolvable stitches, and cover it with a dressing. How long does the surgery take? Depending upon the complexity, the time for surgery can vary, but typically it takes about an hour or up to two hours. How long does it take to recover? Everyone's spinal surgery recovery timeline will be different because it depends on various factors which are personal to you, such as age, fitness levels, reason for having a discectomy, etc. When you first wake up after your operation, you will feel groggy due to the anesthetic. But as it wears off, you might feel pain in your back. This is very normal and will give you painkillers to deal with any post-operative pain. The back pain from the operation can take a couple of weeks to dissipate, but for most people, the pain and often the numbness caused by the disc herniation is gone immediately. We will get you up and about with your physiotherapist as soon as possible. They will teach you exercises to gradually rebuild your strength and mobility, and you will be advised to continue this at home. As soon as you are comfortable that it is safe for you to be discharged, you will be able to go home. Most people are able to go home just after one night. You won't be able to drive yourself home from hospital, so arrange for someone to collect you. Alternatively, we can help you book a taxi. Spinal surgery will leave you feeling very tired, which might make you feel emotional too. This is normal, as your body is using lots of energy to heal itself. Take it easy and be kind to yourself. You'll probably need someone to help you for a week or two after you get home. Your physiotherapist will have given you an exercise plan to follow during your recovery period. Following this will give you the best chance for a full and quick recovery. Start small and gradually build up your activity levels over time. Avoid heavy lifting for six weeks or so and avoid sitting or standing for long periods in one position because it can cause your back to stiffen. If your incision was closed using non-dissolvable stitches, this will need to be removed after about seven to 10 days. If this is the case, we'll let you know before you leave the hospital. When can you return to work and driving? If you have a low impact job, such as an office job, you can usually return to work after about four weeks, although you may not feel entirely ready. After six weeks, you should feel well on your way to recovery, but may not be there quite yet. At this point, you can gradually increase your level of activity as long as you feel able. Most people will be able to drive again by this point. I usually tell my patients that if they are able to sit comfortably in a car and apply emergency brake, they should be able to drive. After three months, people with manual jobs should be able to return to work. You should be back to exercising and driving as normal and feel like your old self, although some people find a full recovery takes six months. Most people make a good recovery overall and find that the symptoms is significantly. So, there you have it, a run through what it is like to have a discectomy and why you might benefit from the procedure. If you would like to discuss having this surgery in more detail, you can book an appointment with me or your nearest consultant at circlehealthgroup.co.uk. We hope you find this video useful and do not hesitate to leave any questions in the comment section below.